Welcome to the Divergent Hope Podcast. This is a place where we can have open and honest discussion about all the different ways we can explore our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Hosted by Laurel Coolbaugh. Let's get into today's episode. Hey, welcome back to the Divergent Hope Podcast. And we are continuing our series today on play, the spiritual practice of play. So here's kind of a fun question for you. Can riding motorcycles actually be considered a spiritual practice? Why, absolutely, and you'll learn why today with our guest. So today I'm being joined once again. He has re-returned, no, returned, (laughs) (laughs) by Daniel Jung, and he is going to uh, introduce himself. Tell us more about yourself. I'm introducing myself. Yeah, you are. Well, uh, Divergent Hope is produced by Faith Community Church. Right. um, And I work at Faith Community Church with you, Laurel. As do I, right. (laughs) Uh, And I'm the worship director here. And it is a privilege and honor to partner with God, work for God, and work alongside you and an amazing staff. So, yes, I am the motorcycle rider of the staff. I'm the only person on staff who rides. (laughs) At least so far, right? Yeah. We might have some converts after this. Who Mm, knows, right? Hopefully. That's what I pray. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I just think when I hear Daniel talk about being on his bike and riding the track, You just see the light in his eyes. You see the passion in him. Um, You see him kind of go into that zone and that place. And it's just really fun. So uh, I think it was last summer that we kind of came up with the idea of, oh, my gosh, we've got to have you talk about this, Daniel, Mm -hmm. and let people think outside of the box more, uh, especially as people who follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, We tend to think about spiritual disciplines or practices as reading the Bible, going to church, praying, all very good. But there are so many more. And it's important to um, engage with them because God made us to be ultimately integrated people. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're not just a body. We're not just a mind, right? And so, um, so... what we do in engaging in play, first of all, helps us somewhat go back to remembering that we're we're a child first, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and so and also to release and renew. Yeah. So um, this is why we're really talking about this. In we did last session, and now this one too, and we have one more coming up as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, really focusing on. Experienced, experiencing joy and passion and pleasure as you play mm-hmm. uh, with God. So to begin with, tell us when you got started with motorcycle riding and then, and if it was a separate time when you started riding the track. Oh, yeah. All right. So I, I started dabbling um, with dirt bikes really growing yeah. up. Um, it wasn't until I moved to the U.S. So I moved uh, about 10 years. I grew up in Malaysia, mm-hmm. for you listening, uh, for you first-timers who don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I moved here, and I thought, well, there are places that rent dirt bikes. Well, let me just do that. So I did that for a couple of years. I loved it. Um, but I wasn't doing, like, MX. MX is the, the sand pits with the crazy jumps and all uh, that. I wasn't doing that. Yeah. I was too afraid of that. Yeah. What I loved about it at first was the scenery oh, it yeah. was very um zen <laughs> yeah it's peaceful it's just you the trees or what they call trail riding mm-hmm. um so it's just you know muddy whatever water uh, trying to jump over logs <laughs> <laughs> um it started out there yeah i was very bad at it because <laughs> i was the only one doing it alone yeah and i didn't really have a coach or anything i just whatever yeah um then that led to buying a street bike uh, and getting my license. The long story short there is I lived in an apartment at the time in Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, I didn't have a place to store a, a motorcycle. I didn't have a place to store a trailer because dirt bikes are not street legal. I mean, uh-huh. you can get street legal dirt bikes, but yeah. 
they're like more than twice the cost. Wow. Um, for wow. not a lot of power. I mean, you're talking about like a dirt bike that maxes out at 65 miles per hour. Okay, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and it's, it's going to cost you about five figures. Yeah. You know, low five figures. Yeah, My it's gosh, who for, knew? For street legal dirt bikes. Wow. Dirt bikes that are not street legal, it's like half the price. Okay. Um, so I didn't have space for a trailer. I didn't have space for a dirt bike in my apartment. I thought, well, I really want a dirt bike, but maybe it's time to look into getting a license and start doing that. Realize that it was a different kind of Zen. Yeah. Um, I love the twisty roads, you know, curvy roads. It's yeah. super fun. The wow. same thing, your nature. Uh, you go on a, a scenic highway, you know, um, New Hampshire, there's yeah. like the Kank, yeah. there's uh, Mount Washington, all that stuff. It's yeah. it's a great ride. <clears throat> Explain to people who are not New Englanders what the Kank is. Oh, that's the... Uh, Kangamangus. Kangamangus, side tangent. Kangamangus is what the locals say. Oh. But if you actually read it, it's supposed to be pronounced Kangamagus. Oh, I didn't know that. There's no N in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. Kankamagus. Thank you. Kankamagus. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Anywho. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah. riding those scenic routes. Yeah. It's a wonderful time. Oh. Um, super zen. And then, of course, you realize well, you know, bikes are, are dangerous, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, there are a lot of different types of bikers out there, and there yeah. are some really dangerous riders yeah. out there yeah. who should not be riding the way they do, yeah. and they should go to a racetrack. Yeah. I was not one of them, yeah. but I realized it was very easy to start, you know, riding over the speed limit. Um, bikes are quick. Yeah. <laughs> They're quick little things, and they are dangerous. So right. I thought, well, let's try, let's try a track day. So you can take your street bike, go on a, a racetrack, and learn to ride safely, ride fast safely, and learn to develop new skills along okay. the way. Wow. And immediately was hooked. Oh, wow. And so it just kind of progressed from dirt bikes to street bikes to track bikes. I, I haven't ridden a dirt bike in a long time. Yeah. But I do occasionally ride on the street still, mm -hmm. and I do track days pretty much as much as I can. Wow. And so today, would you say that you have a preference for dirt bikes versus street bikes? Like, um, you know, barring whether or not you can do it, meaning because you can't, you know, the the cost of a dirt bike or, mm -hmm. you know, for the street. But would you have a preference? Uh, actually, my preference is a track bike. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's actually... Uh, usually you would buy a cheaper bike yeah. because in the event that you go down, <laughs> you know, it's fixable. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's not as sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A street bike, in my opinion, is something a little more polished. Yeah. You take pictures of it. You want to be proud of it. Yeah. You want to show it off. A track bike can be as sketchy as you want right, it to right. be. <laughs> as long as it's safe mechanically, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> so do you have... A street bike and a track bike. Yes, I okay, do. Okay, you do. Mm -hmm. All right, very cool. And tell us what this thing is in the middle of the table between us. Uh, this is actually my track helmet. Wow. So this is the one I, I use. Um, I don't yeah. know if you can see it on the camera for those watching yeah. on YouTube. There are stickers here. That's the, the tech inspection. They inspect your helmet to make sure it's wow. it's good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's all the stickers, all the, the track um, events that I've done with this helmet. And am I noticing that there are really sharp fangs here on the side painted? <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, um, that yeah, is I'll spin really it around for the that's camera. a thing of beauty. It's a piece of art. It yeah. really is. Yeah, I um, love you that. You have little vents. Yep. Up here, and it's kind to of the is it aerodynamic in yes. the back? Yes, Very, yes, it is. That's and that's uh, impressive. I could even say that. There's and, even yeah. a that's bug, right. a dead bug. Actually, there are a lot of dead bugs. Yeah, if you yeah, look yeah. At it. Wow. And they're everywhere. So very cool. That's amazing. This bug is fresh, uh, probably from two or three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> fresh meat. And, oh, fresh meat. Uh, Strange question, maybe. You are also a musician, of course, as mm -hmm. we heard. Mm -hmm. Does this help protect your ears at all from the noise? Uh, it does protect your ears from noise, but we do all wear earplugs. Okay, good. Oh, that's <clears throat> good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Very cool. I'm so glad you brought that prop. <laughs> that's really fun. 
Um, so tell me what it is that uh, brings you so much joy, if you can describe it. Like how, um, first of all, the one thing about play and engaging in the spiritual practice of play is that it's supposed to bring a lot of recreation to mm, you. Mm. We think of the word recreation. Um, but we are recreated when we are uh, playing. Mm. Um, and so how does that happen for you when you ride the street bike or when you go on the track? Yeah. And um, And kind of try to describe to us what you feel mm. when you are riding. I mean, you talked about the fun of the twisty roads um, and the Zen, like yep. in the, the dirt bike, yep. and also Zen with a, a street bike. But like, tell us more. I'd love to hear. I love the word, by the way, re- recreation. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that to be so interesting and well-timed because... Uh, so I was on vacation. I was in New York. Mm-hmm. I was riding the track there uh, for three days, New York safety track. Um, it's, I don't know. It feels like the Wild West out there. There's nobody. <laughs> um, and this is my first day back in the office after being gone for a couple of days. And the moment I came back or I was pulling to the parking lot today, and I just thought, I feel so refreshed. Like, wow. I'm so ready to go back to work. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I love that you said that, and I love yeah. that that's how you you uh, reread the word. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so what's what's so uh, joyful about it? I love what you said um, earlier, and I, I got to listen in on the, the episode on the movies oh, and cool. the shows. And I, I just love the concept. I mean, um, Sabbath is not what people think, mm-hmm. right? Um, you were saying how, or you've said in past episodes, how Sabbath is not just, I'm going to lay down and not do anything. Right. It's about doing stuff that brings you joy, that refreshes you, that recreates you. Yes. And this is one of that stuff for me. Absolutely. Um, just like uh, an artist would with painting. Yes. Uh, a musician would with instruments yep. or a wood, uh, you know, worker. Right, right. Like a carpenter. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. That's word. Um bikes in that way is is that for me in that i'm someone with a very busy mind Mm -hmm. it's very difficult for me to silence my mind yeah um having whatever two minutes of silence is difficult Mm -hmm. because i start thinking of the chores i have to do the grocery i have to buy Mm -hmm. this other work i have to do or like i forgot to pay this bill whatever yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) you start you know going on and on but on the track or at least for the track, um, you have to be super laser focused wow. on the thing in front of you because yep. it is high speeds. Yep. It is dangerous. Yeah. And really on the track, your your goal is how do I minimize my lap time? Mm-hmm. You know, how do I get from uh, 156.24 to a 155.24? Yeah. You know, and the, the milliseconds, every thousands, hundreds of a second yeah. counts. Wow. wow. Um, and so you're, you're laser focused in on that, Mm -hmm. um, on the racetrack, you have a racing line. Okay. Um, and you basically try and, for example, um, the general idea is if you're taking a left turn, you want to start from the very right side of the track. Okay. So that you can now square off the turn, Mm -hmm. take a left turn and hit the apex. The apex is basically where the curb is or the tarmac ends. And then you start to throttle out and you get to the far end. Wow. What what happens when you do this is you can actually accelerate more and then brake later and then turn in Mm -hmm. and then accelerate again faster Mm -hmm. so you can drive more speed. And as you accelerate, your bike or car um, will drift out to the far end of the track again. Right. There are other ways of, you know, taking a corner, but in general, you want to do an outside, inside, outside. Yeah. So you are constantly thinking of, okay, what's a left turn? I got to stay to the right. Right. I got to hit this apex. Oh, but it's a left turn to another left turn. So I have to, or a left turn to a right turn. So how do I, you know, you just strategize your line. Wow, really? A lot of strategy, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. So in in that sense, it forces me to unplug. Yeah. 
in um, in the the Zen street writing situation, it's just you going at a leisure pace. Yeah. <laughs> You're just really taking in nature. Yeah. And honestly, that is the best time for me to pray. Yeah, I, I can believe that. Yeah. yeah. So that is every time I just I finish work. Right. I'll go home, get yeah. on my bike. It's yeah. an hour. You yeah. know, around the trails, and I'm just praying. I'm just talking to my my father. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, I love that imagery. I mean, I I've often said that my best times of prayer tend to be while I'm walking, mm. and and I I guess it's the movement of my body and just like you said, I can get in a zone. So other things kind of move away, and I can just be there with God. Precisely. So I can imagine that for you too Mm -hmm. wow Mm -hmm. wow that's amazing um so obviously it's not tiring for you that's interesting (laughs) it it creates or you have so much strategy to think of yeah and obviously you have to be very focused as you said yeah but that's not tiring maybe because it's a different you know what you're thinking about compared to the rest of your life? I don't know. Well, mentally, I wouldn't say it's tiring. Yeah. Um, it is refreshing because everything else stops. Yes, that's, and, that's what I, yeah. Um, I, initially, when I started doing track days, I, I would do just one day. Yep. And I had a, a coach tell me, you should think of doing multiple days in a row because, first of all, you learn faster. Okay. You know, you go home, you're thinking about the stuff, you come back, you just want to apply the stuff you just learned. Yeah. And it's true. The moment I started doing multiple days, whether it's two or three days in a row, I improved a lot quicker. Wow. And not only that, I realized that it was a vacation for my mind. That's incredible. This past week, I I didn't have to think of work at all because <laughs> all I was thinking of was, oh, my gosh, turn five is difficult. How do I take this quicker? Right. Or how is he breaking there when I'm breaking here? Yeah. Wow. Wow. But again, the fact that even you thinking about that, and I know you're not thinking about anything else, but even that, uh, again, you're thinking, you're engaged. Mm-hmm. You have to be, as you said, laser yeah. focused. But because you're thinking about you know something very different and yes. experiencing it at the same time, mm-hmm. it's very recreative. Yes. That's just amazing. Indeed. Wow. Wow. I love that. Um, I was going to ask you too, um, because you brought up that it's very dangerous. <laughs> so how do you? Uh, because. And I know life is dangerous, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying anything about doing it because it's dangerous. But what I want to know for people who are listening too is how do you? Um, I don't want to use the word justify that, but mm. how do you deal with that with God in terms of accountability for your life, mm. and also with those you love? Yeah, like what. Is there much discussion around that? Uh, people who dearly love you, like Daniel, I wish you wouldn't do that. And then what do you do with that with God? You know, is that I, an issue? Maybe I it's not even an issue. I love that that's a question. Yeah. That's a very real question. Yeah. Um, I'll start by, I think earlier I was talking about the different types of writers out there. Uh-huh. Um, so a little biker terminology, uh, the term squid. <laughs> You call someone a squid when they don't wear any gear. Oh. So they're out there on their motorcycle with, you know, just a T-shirt, a, sh- a pair of shorts, sandals, whatever. Yeah. Wow. Um, some some states don't have helmet laws, yeah, right? right? So they're, um, they don't wear helmets. Um, those are people we call squids. Yeah. And more than typically, they are frowned upon. Yeah. Uh, and then there's this phrase called at gat. At okay. GAT, okay. which is all the gear all the time. Okay. At GAT. Okay. <laughs> um, and then there, so so if you think of these two as, you know, two or, or a spectrum and they're, right. you know, on two ends, you have the squids, you have the at GAT people, yeah. and then all the people in between. In between, yeah. I tend to go like all the way to the at GAT side. Yep. Uh, this was distilled in me from street riding. Okay. Well, I guess even dirt riding for that matter. 
you fall a lot more on the dirt than okay. you do on the than you, hopefully than on the street. On the street right, <laughs> hopefully yeah. never on the street. Right, right. Um, thank God I've never experienced a street crash. Yeah. And that will never happen, Lord Jesus. Yes, right, exactly. (laughs) Um, I have crashed on on the track once exactly a year ago on on the same track in New York because it was raining um, and I didn't have rain tires. Um, However, um, the the feeling is it is dangerous and you need to be responsible. Right. So... I wear all the gear. I, I have uh, an airbag. They make airbags for Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. And it connects awesome. Your, your app and everything. Wow. And um, it has saved so many people from broken bones. I oh, mean, man. we've seen, if you watch um, the professional motorcycle racing, MotoGP, yeah. yep. or World SBKs, yeah. all these different types of uh, bike racing, <clears throat> they all wear airbags. Oh, excellent. And if you watch them tumble... I mean, these guys are going, you know, way quicker than I am. Yeah. Way, way quicker than I yeah. am. <clears throat> and um, you look at the way they tumble and you look where they, they flip their bodies after being, you know, thrown out from their bikes. It's amazing that they have no broken bones. Wow. They can go back, you know, probably an hour later with a new bike and go to the next session. Oh, my gosh. It is insane. I had no idea. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And actually makes me feel better. yeah now because i care for you it makes me feel better to know that about you yeah Yeah. (laughs) even if um it's it's 100 degrees out there i mean i i feel i empathize with the people in like florida and texas you know it's 110 degrees out there and you just want to go on a t-shirt yeah and get it but even when it gets hot here i I I think it's like what 890 or something today right. um, yes it is yeah i i still feel like you you have to buy the right gear there's mesh gear yes. with you know kevlar enforcements you okay. have riding jeans with kevlar enforcements wow. you have all these good um gear out there that's available for purchase it's worth investment right right yeah you know, yeah it might be uh 550 dollars for boots right. but What's a broken ankle? Oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. It's well worth it. Yeah. So uh, for the people who want to geek out on on motorcycles right now, what is your best time so far? Uh, Depends on the track. track. Okay. So um, the fastest I am, uh, or the the track that I'm fastest at is Palmer in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, Palmer Motorsports. Yeah. I'm nowhere near the, the lap. records (laughs) records <laughs> but on a on a 600 cc displacement class i am doing a 156 and i believe people in the same displacement are doing like 148s wow so very that is cool a lot of time difference <laughs> very cool yeah. so um what does it feel like for you when you well, you talked about just coming back today and mm-hmm. feeling so refreshed. Yeah. But after, say, a great lap, mm-hmm. what does that feel like for you? Great. Actually, here, <clears throat> I'll, I'll share. I have, I have a couple things to share about kind of the lessons from the track. Oh, I love it. Um, I feel like the only lesson from the street, to just put a, a period there, yeah. the lesson from the street is... It's just Zen. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is just quiet. You're in your helmet. You can pray. You can just have your quiet time with God. Wow. That, that's all street is to me now. Yep. <clears throat> yep. I don't like riding in the city because more cars, more oh, danger. Yeah. yeah, really. But the track, uh, you mentioned the perfect lap. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect lap. And I love that. <clears throat> the... The... <laughs> the maybe this is my... Um, I don't know, like overachiever, like you're busy perfectionist mind. <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Revealing myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what I love about it. There is no such thing as a perfect track, a perfect lap. Because um, let's say there are, whatever, 10 turns. Let's mm-hmm. make it simple 10 turns on a racetrack. And a racetrack isn't just left turns yeah. or left and right, there's elevation. And that changes things. There's banking. There's so many things that adds to a the, the beauty of um, a racetrack. Okay. And every track is different. Yep. Some people think you're just going around in circles. 
there's so many different nuances on wow. a track. Wow. Um, even down to like, there is a, um, there's a bump in turn 10. Yeah. And you have to go over the bump or you have to strategize to go just to the left of the bump. And like, you notice, you notice all these small little simple things that whatever. Um, and the fact is, let's say you're trying to get your perfect lap, whatever. Right, right. And you notice, wow, going into turn five, I'm pretty slow. Yeah. You know, that person is breaking, whatever, 100 meters after I am. Mm -hmm. So we're on similar bikes. So if they can do it, I can do it. So you learn to brake later, okay. harder. Right. You learn to turn, you know, faster. Right. Um, and all that stuff. And once you nail down this new version of turn five and you're like, wow, I just gained whatever, a tenth of a second, which counts. Yeah. Um, and you realize, oh, my gosh, it's now messed up turn six. Oh, right. That I yeah. initially had perfect. Right, right, right. Oh, right. So yeah. one thing leads to another and you realize, oh, my gosh, I'll never get this track perfect in yeah. that way because right. everything will change everything. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's it's. It's one of the first things I learned riding on track, seeing how beautiful that metaphor is to life. Yes. And it initially made me realize, wow, okay, so if this is life, there is no such thing as a perfect life. Right. And there's a nuance there of, okay, well, if I, if I mess up turn five, even if I was, whatever, to the left a little, I took it shallow or something, um... It, it doesn't matter because I can overcompensate on the exit if I mess up the entry of a corner. Or right. if I mess up the exit, <laughs> I can try and compensate for the entry of the next corner. Right, right. Which is the same kind of mirror of how God works in our life. Oh, I we, love that. We can, you know, mess up and God can be like, listen, <laughs> you know... Um, Get out of the desert or step out of the water, whatever. Right. And we can mess it up, mess it up, mess it up. And God can be like, okay, you know what? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I got you. I, I can save you from this. Yeah. Which is so consistent to God's character, even in the Bible. It is. It's, wow. It's, it's nice. Um, and another lesson is you... So you are on track with a bunch of other riders. <clears throat> At the same time, right? At the same okay, time. Yeah. And some people are ask about that. quicker than you. Some people are slower than right, you. Right, right. And you have to strategize how to pass someone who's slower than you. Okay. And it's not just, oh, I'm going to pass here and you go. It's not as simple as that. You have to strategize and rethink and analyze the way they ride and go, oh okay, gosh. they're slower here, they're quicker here. Wow. But overall, I gain a lot of time here. So I need to strategize and set myself up for this pass. And the biggest thing about passing is you have to commit to the act of passing. Yes. <laughs> you can't chicken out at the end because most of the time you are taking the more awkward line mm -hmm. to pass someone, not the, the most ideal line. So okay. again, there's no perfect lap because you're thinking of, well, I have to pass someone. Now I have to take this really awkward outside line. Yeah. And I have to be faster wow. when I'm not on the ideal line right. or the quickest line, should I say. Right. So there's a lot to that. Yeah. And committing to something um, that is scarier <laughs> also teaches you a lot about how life is sometimes. And huge trust lessons right there, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just on the track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow, this is so fascinating. <laughs> no, really it is. Um, so I wanted to go back when you were talking about nuances mm -hmm. on the track, which, of course, this is totally foreign to me. But that's so fascinating to me. <laughs> and, um, and, of course, how you strategize one part of the track, but how that throws off mm -hmm. maybe completely the next part, you right. know, like, yeah. But that, uh, something about that makes me think of music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I wonder, have you ever thought about, is there a, uh, 
comparison in that in terms of the nuance of a track and the nuance in music? And I'm throwing this question at you out of the blue. So you can say, I'll have to think about that one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yes, there is a lot of similarities in that. Yeah. Um, That can be a a whole podcast of its own. I'm sure. I bet it could. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So stay tuned (laughs) for that one. That's good. Yeah. Um, I will. I want to share something um, that happened to me just this, this past Sunday. Yeah. So this year... Um, this, this track riding season has not been great for me. Mm-hmm. Um, my bike uh, has had a lot of problems. When so, you say this, meaning beginning, because we're in New England. Yeah. So beginning in this season. This season. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. we start in May. Okay. Uh, first weekend was, it, first weekend in May was our first um, event. Okay. Um, so I had a lot of problems with my bike. Um, I ride a Triumph. As the brand, mm-hmm. it's uh, Street Triple Seven Sixty Five, mm-hmm. and uh, I just converted it into a track bike. Oh it's, wow! It's usually a street bike, but okay. I converted it, so it's just for the track. There's no license plates. There's no lights. There's okay. no turn signals, mirrors, whatever. Wow! Um, but I, I love that bike. Uh. <laughs> I love that bike. It's given me a lot of problems. Um, I actually no, I've had zero good days on that bike. Until this past weekend. Oh, wow. Um, and, and even this past weekend, I had to give up some things um, to make the bike rideable. Yeah. Um, and that wasn't ideal, but whatever. I could ride and have a, a, a good time. But I'll get to the good time part yeah. in a second. So I wasn't actually having the best time on the first day on Saturday. And on Sunday morning, I thought, I'm going to do this podcast uh, we're filming here on a Wednesday, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so we're filming this podcast on Wednesday, and I'm going to talk about how joyful it is. Like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Like that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I don't want to do that right now, because um, all I can think about is the problems. Yeah. And and trying to fix it. So, I thought, okay, whatever. I'll just quickly do my devo for the morning. So I'm, you know, I'm all dressed up in my leathers. Yeah. I'm sipping on my coffee. I pull up my Bible reading plan, and the um, <laughs> the scripture was Hebrews four, uh, verse nine to ten. Um, sorry, to eleven, and it says, "There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from His. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest." so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Oh, my gosh. God, <laughs> right on the money. <laughs> right on the money. <laughs> and I just, I had to sit back and just go, you know, God, you're right. You designed me to love this sport. Yeah. I love motorsports. I love F1. Yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about NASCAR. I think it's crazy. Yeah. It's kind of dumb. <laughs> Change my mind, YouTube comments. But And, and motorcycles, I just... I love motorsports. Why do I feel like I haven't had that same joy this year? Uh, And God had to remind me, no, 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 you are resting from your actual work work. Yes. Why are you making this your work? Like, who cares about your lap time? Right. Who cares about, you know, all all that stuff? Yeah. Just go have fun. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And, um... I did just that on the second day. Yeah. I got my best lap time at this track. Wow. Yeah. And all the goals that I wanted to get done for this weekend, I did. Wow, and Daniel. I left feeling so accomplished. Oh, my gosh. Which led to the feeling of, I'm so refreshed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not only did I get to unplug, I learned new skills and I accomplished all my goals. And now I'm, I'm just ready to go back to work. <laughs> What a story. And, you know, what's, uh, as you already said, what's so important about that is how we can bring our work mindset mm-hmm, mm-hmm. into play. Yes. Or it, it we, we may not try to, but it just comes because we're so, that's maybe a default. Yeah. And then it, it's like, wow, this is, this is kind of taking the joy out of it mm-hmm. or 
That was that was great. I love how God did that for you. He, he's oh so good. my gosh! Yeah, really. <laughs> that that's just a marvelous example of how we can go askew. Mm-hmm. I, I think of something. Uh, it's different, but a couple weeks ago, I did a silent retreat, mm. which uh, for me is typically very refreshing. And it doesn't mean I sit around in the silence for three days and twiddle my thumbs. That's not what... um, So when I go, before I go, I start to, you know, talk to God about, okay, what do you want this time to be about? Mm. And um, what would feel refreshing, God, you know, Mm. to me and whatever? What what are you inviting? Uh, I usually think of, besides my Bible as well, I I usually think of a book or two that I might want to read or you know, just take my time through. Um, But I always plan on a lot of just down mental time. And for me, it always involves walking on the beach somewhere at some point. That's nice. Yeah. And it was interesting, though. So I took three days. And um, the second day kind of shocked me as how tired I was. Mm. Um, I know that that can often happen, like kind of like when you go on a vacation, too. You, right. you you just start decompress completely. Yeah. Uh, but this time it did uh, it did surprise me how exhausted I was. Wow. And so um, on the third day, though, I felt this inner pressure, hmm. um, like I'm supposed to get something out of this, hmm. you know. And a friend of mine had texted me and just said, you know, praying for you, uh, hmm. and. Except for, you know, text to my husband and son and this particular friend because she was praying. I I pretty much don't do any technology. Mm. Um, And then she said, I'm I'm excited to hear what God reveals to you. So that was me. That wasn't her. Putting this internal pressure that I need to have some narrative that I come out of this with. You know, like God showed me this. God taught me this. You know, Uh, I had this revelation. And... And I was struggling with this because I knew I I knew that that wasn't right. That right. wasn't necessary. <clears throat> I knew it full well, but I was struggling with it. And that to me, that's a similar kind of idea that you're talking about. And I had I came upon reading this letter that talked about a man who went on sabbatical, and his spiritual director said to him. Uh, <laughs> it was something more pithy, but it was something like, uh, I want you to uh, write this on a piece of paper. Do not accomplish anything, you know, and and he she said, no, I want you to write this down. And he wrote it on a piece of paper and he took it with him. But and he, he talked about, again, how it's always there, like mm. you're supposed to accomplish something. Yep. God needs to reveal God's self yep. to you. And, and basically, uh, through this, th- through this uh, story that he wrote about his sabbatical, um, he was saying, you know, what if God just wants to refresh you so that down the road that he, God knows what's coming in your life, uh, that's the time you're going to be fruitful and be producing. But right now, you're just detaching, you're resting, and you're... But again, I felt uh, my point really was that I felt the same kind of Mm. like invasion of that sense of, what am I going to get out of this? What do I, you know, and it's not me producing, but it's more expecting, God, what are you going to, what are you going to give me so I can go away from this and tell people I got something good, (laughs) (laughs) which is ridiculous, you know? And so... That was the good I got out of it, which was mm. detach, leave it alone, and let God make you fruitful at the right time. That's amazing. Yeah, and so I really appreciate your your story about <laughs> yeah about the the real Sabbath rest right, and how right. you needed to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So tell me more about. Um, I mean, you, you were talking about being on the track at the same time with mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. How do you experience community on the track? And in what way? I mean, you kind of talked already a a little bit about how it might nourish you because 
you're you're having again to focus laser focus on how you pass this person yeah. the yeah. speed but what other ways does being in community on a track nourish you I love that yeah. um, so I started doing track days with a, a friend um, here who comes to this church <clears throat> his name is Cliff mm-hmm. um, him and I well <clears throat> I didn't know he rode bikes he found out that I bought a bike. I found out that he has bikes. We started riding on the street together. And I was like, hey, Cliff, I really want to do a track day. Have you thought of doing it? He's like, oh, yeah, I just haven't had, you know, people to go with. So we started going together. And we met this one guy, Sumit, <clears throat> who would always park, like, right next to us uh, just by chance. Mm-hmm. And um, we started chatting. We started being friends. Next thing you know, we are Facebook friends. I started getting my other friend, Matt. I'm like, hey, dude, you should do a track day. Like, you would love it. He's like, dude, I've always wanted to do one. Now that you're in it, I'm in it. <laughs> and then we met this other guy, Ben, um, who also became our friend. We met this other guy, Alex, who also became our friend. Now we just have this community of guys oh, I love um, it. who go to the track together. Wow. We rent garages together at the racetrack. We saw our bikes together. We go splitsies on different gear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I'll bring, like, my canopy when we don't have a garage. Okay. Someone brings their fan, their, you know, big clock. Like Wow. Like, it's just a, a great uh, bunch of people coming together. Right. And we, we reflect on this often. <clears throat> not it's, – it's not normal um, to go to a track day and start – finding all these friends and start becoming close friends. Um, but for us, it worked out. Okay, it, yeah. You start to have all these people, and they've, like, I can say that they're one of my, you know, they're some of my closest friends. Yeah. Um, and not only that, I mean, the, there are just a ton of bikers who yeah. love motorcycles, who are so willing to share knowledge. I approached this random, the, the guy who did the the. Um, 148 at Palmer oh, yeah. when I was doing like about two minutes at the time. <clears throat> um, I'm like, how do you get to 148? And we all have lap timers. We all have data um, apps on our right, phones. Right. Um, and you can, he was like, yeah, I'll share my data with you. So he sends me his data and I can look side by side where he's, you know, gassing <gasps> on, where he's braking, how hard he's braking. Wow. And compared to mine. Right. You know, so it's just, it's a great environment, great community, just helping each other. Yeah. But I will say uh, we are blessed yeah. that our group of friends, the, the six, seven people, yeah. it's, it's a great, great time. <laughs> oh, it sounds so much fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it's not my thing, I know, but the community sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. And that you can share this information together and kind of compare, you know, how you took this turn or whatever. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You can even bring – people bring their significant others to just hang out. Right. People bring their kids, their dogs. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> it's a real communal experience. So speaking of, I know that your significant other also rides, but yep. does she ride the track too? She's tried it once. Okay. They do something called non-sport bike track day here okay. in New England. Yep. Um, Ken Condon is the person who runs it with riding in the zone. I think that's – what it's called yeah um ken is awesome yeah. he's super quick <laughs> um he is on the older side but oh my gosh he's quick wow. <clears throat> he's super knowledgeable so he runs this where um you don't have to bring a track bike you can bring any bike any street bike yeah um people bring their harleys you know um if you're into bikes uh the honda Goldwing. it's a huge what they call couch on wheels <laughs> <laughs> they bring that to the track and they just have a, a great time Wow. And um, so Talia's done that. Yeah. And she likes it enough because it teaches her things, but it's not her Zen yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> it's so too scary. She's happy to be on the street, a street yes. bike person. She loves yeah. being on the street. That's wonderful. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So, because we live in New England, and unfortunately, I guess the season's kind of short for you mm-hmm. compared to other parts mm-hmm. of the country. Yeah. <laughs> But we don't want you to leave, Daniel. So what do you do, since the season is more short, what do you do 
off season for biking um, to engage in play and recreation? What are the, some of the other things that, um, that you transition to? I will be honest. I don't know. I don't have a real thing that gives me that same amount of joy. Yeah. I mean, I have heated vests, heated socks, heated gloves, heated grips. I have everything that I can heat up. Yeah. So I can extend the riding season for as long as I can. Yeah, that's good. Uh, And plus, um, up here in New England, um, the track season ends uh, ends by, by the end of September. Okay. So... You know, last week and weekend of September comes. That's it. Yeah. You know, the riding season for me is uh, about like mid December. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> out here, um, so October, November, half of December, I'm on the street with my street bike. Yeah. Trying to stay as warm as I can. I can't be on the track anymore. Right. Um, but I do love motorsports. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I I feel like is translatable is sim racing so at home i have a sim set up okay the right cockpit, you know right. they have these steering wheels with like force feedback uh-huh. um and it, it feels pretty real yeah okay yeah so i have pretty or and games now are so realistic right there's exactly. a movie huh, last episode yeah. about movies uh gran turismo right. on netflix um that's a nice movie to to kind of peek under the hood and see, you know, look at the, the culture of sim racing. Right. And it's the same thing, really. You're looking at the, the same turns, yeah. you know, the same circuits, same kind of idea. Yeah. Um, it's less physically fatiguing. Yes. Yeah, I bet. Because <laughs> you're not actually, you know, hanging off. Yeah. Um, by the way, a misconception of, of bikers is you're sitting down on the bike all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go and look up, you know, videos online. No one is sitting on their track bike um, on the track. They're essentially you're doing multiple squats <laughs> on the track because you're standing up, shifting your body weight, and you're hanging off the bike. So it's kind of, I think about like, and I, horseback riding, it's a similar, oh, right? Oh, very, very yeah. similar. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Your whole body, you have to use your core. I didn't know that. Oh, it's so similar. Yeah. Wow. Actually, the, the way you steer a horse yeah. is very similar to a wow. bike. Wow. Wow. And another fun fact is to turn left, you would think you would turn your handlebars to the left. Right. But to turn left, you actually push left. So your handlebars are turning right, yeah. but the forces and everything makes your bike tip over to the left. Anyway, wow. I digress. <clears throat> oh, man. Um, it's I love it, though. I love your the insights because you're helping me understand more what you're <laughs> – really, what you're getting into, what's exciting about it, what – Obviously, your your passion comes through. But anyway, keep oh, yeah. going. It, yeah. it is a workout, actually. So I brought yeah. this show and tell. Um, you When you turn your bike over, when you lean over your bike to make a corner, you counter steer. That's the word. You're, um, when you push left to go left, push right to go right. Right. But you also want to get your body weight over so your center of gravity is over and it makes the bike lean less. Yep. And you get to, you know, kind of tighten your, your turning radius. Yeah. <clears throat> or you can make a tighter turn by leaning the bike more and you are, you know, way off to the side. Wow. And one of the goals is to drag your knee on the pavement. <clears throat> so this is a knee slider Oof. that I have just, like, I can't use it anymore because this past weekend you can, I'm hitting all the, the wear marks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you can... Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's super thin on this side. This is what it used to be, and this is what it is now. Wow. So here you can That's <laughs> impressive. That. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Daniel, wow. To yeah. me, that's a real, um, of, well, it is a real visual of what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my so gosh. your knee is touching the pavement, and you are sliding, sliding. your knee over. Oh, my goodness. That that's is incredible. one of the... Um, one of the goals of riders is to drag your knee. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, right. Exactly. It really is. That's a really good visual. Thank you yeah. for that. And that's so heavy duty too. So how does this stay on your knee? That's Velcro. Oh, okay. Back. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm, wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And when you look at the pro riders now, they're actually dragging elbow. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. And they're dragging uh, shoulder, shoulder as well. Shoulder too? Mm-hmm. Do you think you'll ever 
go to that level? This past weekend, I got real close to dragging my elbow. And back to the story of just this, you know, Sabbath. And like God was like, just just chill out. Yeah. Have fun. Um, The very last session of the day, I told myself, what do I have to lose? I'll just have fun. And I'm not going to care about my fastest lap. That last session was when I got the fastest lap. And when I got my elbow so close to the ground. <laughs> and were you even prepared? Did you have anything like this protecting your elbow? Um, yeah, you do have Okay, stuff. good, good. You are with a lot of All the suit. time. Okay, you know, all you right. boots. You, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I figured stuff. you had that, but <clears throat> I didn't know if this was something additional you put on on it top of all that. It will come with all okay. the leather suits, yeah. Wow. And that's a replaceable thing. Yeah, you, yeah, you okay, to, gotcha. Mm-hmm. That is really cool. <laughs> Daniel, you have educated me so much and made me really actually excited about what (laughs) what it is you do and why I totally get for you Mm -hmm. why this would bring bring so much joy and refreshment to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. And I do want to do a podcast on music and motorcycles like together and Uh that comparison. Okay. That's fascinating me right now, too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to tell us before before we break? Um, yeah, if you ride a motorcycle, please wear your gear. <laughs> oh, I like that. What's it called? Atga? At Gat. At Gat. All the At gear Gat. all the time. All the gear all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And um, yeah, if you don't ride, ride a motorcycle. Wow. So I hope, I hope this gives all of us... Um, a really expanded idea and permission, in a sense, to think about play mm-hmm. as spiritual practice, really playing. Um, and what would bring you this kind of joy? What would what would help you disconnect in great ways mm-hmm. and feel so refreshed? Um, really spend some time after this podcast and and. Think about that. Think outside the box for yourself. But thank you so much, Daniel. Oh, this has yeah, been fabulous. My thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, it, it's it's a delight. So we'll see you next time, and we we have one more one more uh, episode that's going to be on the spiritual practice of play. So join us again. Thanks a lot. Thank you for checking out this episode of Divergent Hope, a podcast produced by Faith Community Church. Wherever you're listening, we invite you to leave a review. We welcome all your feedback. If you want to get connected, visit us at faithma.org. See you soon.